The following program is brought to you in part by the film Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace. Welcome to another Leon China Report. We have a really eclectic and exciting show tonight. First of all, it's very ironic that this law was passed, was initiated by Foreign Minister Lieberman in order to keep the Arabs, to reduce Arab presence in the Knesset. He thought that they will not, when he initiated raising this threshold to four seats in the Knesset before you're making it, he thought the two or three Arab parties will not pass the threshold, they're out. As a result of a uh, corruption scandal that affected his party, his party is now threatened with not making that threshold. So that's the irony of history. Racism doesn't pay. It's not only immoral, Apparently, it doesn't pay either. Um, on the other hand, a surprising, to me, a surprising outcome was when the parties were forced to unite in order to make the threshold, their constituencies became so excited that the number of voters, the percentage of those who, are go who intend to go to vote is higher than ever. While in the Jewish sector, it is declining, from one election to another, because we have so rapid elections, people get tired of it, and they lost trust in politicians and so on. We have a reduction in the number, in the percentages on the Jewish. There was a corresponding reduction on the Arab. Now, for the first time, there is so much enthusiasm because of uni the unity that they may have, they usually are between nine and 11 Arab seats in the Knesset. They're talking now about no less than 12, and possibly 14, and maybe even 15. So that's one phenomenon. The other phenomena, I wonder if in the morning after the elections, they will still be able to hang together. Because this is a coalition, this party is a coalition of impossible contradictions. You have their communists, you have their secularists, you have their the most extreme Islamic uh, party together, can they really agree on an agenda? Finally, in the selection of their chairman, of the leader, they reflected, for the first time in a long time, that they are listening to their constituency. Their constituency blames them that they fight so much for Palestinian rights that they forget the real fight of Israeli Arabs, which is for equality. They chose somebody to head it who has a domestic social justice agenda. He doesn't forget the Palestinian issue. There is this emotional identity and so on. But he places the need of the Arab population in Israel, 20% of the population, he places that at the top of the agenda. And, and I think that reflects, it's, it's almost the, the equivalent of the Israeli parties having to cater to the social, um, um, the social um, uh, demonstrations of three years ago, took time for the political system to accept it. Today, every party is social oriented, social conscience and so on. The same is happening in the, in the Arab sector, where the, the, the issues that really concern the daily life of the Israeli Arabs uh, take center stage for their politicians. Campaign rhetoric sounds as though these guys will never sit with these guys. Well, never in our politics is between three weeks and three months. That's the duration of never. Uh, Yair Lapid and Shas 
will sit in the same coalition if the numbers will allow that to happen. Uh, this one will have to yield a little bit, that one will have to yield a little bit, and, and they will find themselves uh, in the same coalition. I don't take campaign rhetoric, uh, especially on this personal thing. I will never sit with you. I don't take it uh, too seriously. I mean, I've been there too many times to see people find the reason why circumstances have changed, and therefore I change my mind. I believe that his uh, first choice will be to do a national unity coalition. And I'll tell you why. Um, Netanyahu knows that there are two time bombs ticking on the desk of the next prime minister. One of them is violence in the territories, where the detonators are all over the place. It can be price tag nuts, Jewish price tag nuts, provoking something. It can be on the Temple Mount, and we had it a couple of months ago. It can be from Gaza. The, 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 the ticking bombs are all over the place, and he has to defuse that before it explodes. The second ticking bomb is international boycotts. In Europe, they are already running the engines, waiting to, to, to start with boycotts, which the, the wink will come from the politicians, the action may come from the unions, labor unions refusing to unload and process Israeli products. The your EU boycotting every Israeli bank that has a branch in the territories. They are ready with a series of a very stiff, they, they will make a distinction between inside the Green Line, where everything is legitimate, we love Israel of the Green Line, and everything outside of the Green Line, that's contaminated. That does not come to Europe. Now, if you are Bank Lumi and you have a branch there, you don't work in Europe, so close the branch. Europe discovered that it can be relevant to recreating the prospect of a two-state solution. And they're going to use it. I, I hear the talk, I see the staff work in the European Union of the bureaucrats preparing all these things. Bibi knows that if that were to happen, you will not be able to stop it. And the economic consequences are going to be devastating. So he needs to arrest both processes, defuse both bombs. If he is in a narrow right-wing coalition, he cannot do it. Then he is in the hands of uh, uh, Bennett and is forced to go to crazy policies that only aggravate both situations. So he will want to have Bougie on his coalition in order that jointly he can launch some kind of a peace process. Something that will calm the territories and calm the Europeans. Yeah, they can work together. Listen, there's no doubt that they can work together. Uh, the question is, they can work together on the domestic agenda. On the domestic agenda, even though they come from two different schools, uh, they, will, they can find a common ground to do some things that the people demand and uh, in these elections, like in no elections in the past, the socio-economic issues top the public agenda. Okay, 56% say that socio-economic is the most important, and security is somewhere in the 20s. Never happened before. It may still change before the elections if something happens, God forbid. So on the domestic agenda, they can find a common ground. Even on the budget that is usually reflected a frame of mind, an ideology, are you a, an extreme liberal, are you a socialist, are you something in between, you have a different budget. Um, on the peace process, they can find a formula that starts a process but not goes as far, jointly start a process, but that does not go as far uh, as one of them is incapable of tolerating when it comes to implementation. They can find a formula that allows them to start a process together 
even though they will not be able to find a formula that allows them to finish a process together. Um, I hope it doesn't happen because that formula will be half a bluff. It will be half a process. It will be half a pregnancy. I think that on March 18th, we're not going to know who's going to win. In Israel, like in Israel, uh, it will take at least a few days and probably a few weeks. I mean, I just want to remind you of a certain morning when Tsipi Livni won the elections and a few weeks later was unable to form a coalition and someone else did. Um, so with the bizarre electoral system that we have, we're going to have the following. Before the 17th, no, I'm sorry, before the eight, on the 18th, we're going to have the first round of coalition negotiations. That will be negotiations between the various parties and Bibi on the one hand, Bougie on the other, when they are trading, what do I get in order to recommend the president to give you the mandate? So that's the first state of coalition negotiations. Then the president gives the mandate to one of them. And a second set of coalition negotiations starts. What do I get in order to be, uh, to, to, to provide you with the 61 so you have a coalition? If I'm not mistaken, we never had a situation where coalition negotiations concluded su successfully before the last minute allowed by law. And that is 21 weeks is what the president gives one guy. He can extend it for another 21 days if there is enough progress. And by the end of the 21 days, this guy lost his shot and the other guy gets it, 21 days, another 21 days. If he fails, then we go to new elections. This never happened before. I suspect that within the first 21 plus 10, 21, whoever got the mandate will have a coalition. The Leon Sharney Report congratulates the team of BDC, The Price of Peace, and Leon Sharney on the New York Emmy Awards win. The documentary reveals the true story of the negotiations leading up to the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time, the Camp David Accords between Israel and Egypt. Watch it on Hulu.com or buy the special feature edition DVD at select stores. Now get the book the hit movie was based on, Leon Charney's Backdoor Channels. Learn about the backdoor channel negotiations that led to the historic 1978 Israeli-Egyptian peace treaty. Become a witness to history and order backdoor channels online at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Also available at all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at iTunes or Audible.com. Relive history. Order backdoor channels. Get best-selling author Leon Charney's latest book, The Battle of the Two Talmuds. Join Charney as he explores years of Jewish history to find out why and how Talmudic scholars and rabbis abandoned the Holy Land for the lands of the Diaspora. Learn about the power struggles behind the creation of the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds. It's a book critics call engaging and enlightening, a book which will be of interest to people of every faith. Now available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, or download the audiobook of The Battle of the Two Talmuds at iTunes or Audible.com. Leon Charney sets out to discover the true meaning of the Kaddish, the Jewish custom of reciting a prayer to commemorate the death of a close relative. Join Charney as he finds out the history of the Kaddish and how it has evolved. Reviewed as a refreshing walk through Jewish history and a book that deserves to be read by both Jews and non-Jews, The Mystery of the Kaddish is now available online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at audible.com or on iTunes. Discover The Mystery of the Kaddish. Available now over iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Leon Charney's cantorial CD in Disco Long. Listen as Charney movingly sings El Mole Rachamim and Charney's amazing rendition of a disco remix of Adon Olam, all sung in the incredible and individual Charney style. Also listen to the CDs on Rhapsody. Download Leon Charney's cantorial songs in Disco Lam, the disco remix of Adon Olam on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Or listen in on Rhapsody, all available now. Ah. 
I'm hosting here some of my friends. Uh, hopefully we will have here around uh, 100 people, between 90 and 100. This is what we had last elections, two years ago, two years and two months ago. And uh, what we try to do is, to, since it's a holiday in Israel, I don't know if you know in the States, but in Israel election day is a holiday. We don't go to work. And since we don't go to work, we try to find other way to amuse ourselves. And the, 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 uh, the tradition that we have uh, adopted a few years ago was to invite all our friends to a, a kind of open house, serve them with uh, good food, nice drinks, and enjoy ourselves while we, uh, we do it. We try to uh, somehow anticipate, uh, it's not a very sophisticated way, but that's the way we do it. We try to uh, anticipate the votes of our social circle. Needless to say that it does not apply to uh, all the Israelis. It's very limited to the uh, core of Tel Aviv. And uh, behind me on, on this uh, window, with the beautiful uh, sightseeing of Tel Aviv. You can see a table which was uh, drafted by my wife, Yael. <coughs> and as you can see at this time of the day, which is quite early, we have uh, over 20 voters who voted for the uh, Labour Party led by uh, Buzi Herzog, Itzhak Herzog. Nobody so far had voted for the Likud party led by uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Bibi. We have uh, five voters who voted for Meretz, which is the, the, left, the left wing of the uh, kind of socialist party. And we have a few voters who voted for uh, an ex-TV uh, uh, representative uh, by the name of uh, Yair Lapid. Very prominent person bad politician to my taste and uh, we have an ex Likud member Kahlon and we have uh, somebody who voted for the extreme right about a UD so this is our social circle those are the people you will probably see them soon and we will try to discuss so, with some of our friends and make sure and try to understand what made them vote the way the way they have voted last time the uh, votes which were uh, registered on our home video really um, applied to our social group, as I previously said. Uh, we live in a kind of bubble, the Tel Aviv bubble. The Tel Aviv bubble has nothing to do with the rest of Israel. So our friends traditionally vote for the left and, uh, and the, uh, sometimes the center, as you can see clearly here. I, I would rather prefer the term social democrats and in Israel it's not the socialism that leads the uh, vision of this party but rather the uh, civil rights, uh, civil freedom and other uh, values which are not highly respected by the, the, the right party. I think that what make, made most of our friends vote for the Social Democrat uh, Party, the Labour, is the fact that uh, it has a say when it comes to uh, civil rights. Tel Aviv was led for years by Mayor Namir, who was one of the leaders of the Labour Party. Ron Khuldei, uh, the uh, current mayor who has been uh, serving in this uh, post for the uh, last 12 years or so, is a socialist. Tel Aviv is by mistake considered to be a capital city, capitalistic city. Maybe capitalistic people live here, or, or as we call them tycoons, rich people. But their social views, their uh, moral views, their, uh, their national vision is totally different than the, labor, than the Likud uh, national vision, and it's what we call social democrats. So if the same poll is now being uh, handled in uh, Be'er Sheva or in uh, Roshpina, I, I clearly think that the uh, votes are totally differently divided.
as you as you well know, besides several limited incidents like the one we had in Gaza over the last summer, uh, the situation with the Palestinian has been very very calm over the last uh, 13 years, and uh, people believe that the uh, solution and resolving the problem that we have with the Palestinians uh, has nothing to do with the fact that uh, Bibi will rule or uh, Bougie will rule. It has more to do with the question who is going to lead the Palestinian people next. Is it going to be uh, the current president uh, or the uh, extremist uh, party Hamas which is now controlling the Gaza Strip. As long as this question hasn't been resolved, the situation, the status will be very stable. I would like to introduce Maury Matalon, my dear friend, who is not only a friend, but a colleague as well, and a competitor. And uh, Maury belongs to one of the uh, pioneers' families. We call them the pioneers. I think his family's roots go back about 200 years in exactly. Israel. Exactly, 200 years. The Matalon family is a very uh, famous and respected, well-respected family in Israel. And uh, he belongs to our social circle, as I presented it before. So, Mori, the floor is yours. Uh, for me personally, it's amazing, because I come from the Likud, in 1968, when I was a student at the Hebrew University with Dan Meridor, who later became Minister of Justice, Minister of Finance, we formed the Likud, at that time it was called Gachal Student Union. I headed it for several years. All my life I voted to the other side or to the center. Uh, my father, my late father, was one of the founders of the Likud. On Friday I went to his grave and I asked for uh, permission to do something else and to vote for uh, Emet, to vote for the Zionist move uh, with uh, Bougie and Tsipi, which is for me the other side. And I remember, I remember uh, being a child raised in a house that thought at that time that one day, maybe just before the Messiah, uh, the labor uh, will be thrown out of power. And then when it happened in 1977, for me this was the greatest day, and now we have to, we have to change. Uh, it's about time, more than anything else, more than the economy, more than the international politics, is because of the personal behavior of Netanyahu. Because at some point of time, he thinks that uh, this is uh, for him a gift from God, that he can do whatever he wants, and he doesn't really care. He doesn't really deal with the issues except remaining in power. So it's about time to have a change. I believe more than anything else, it's a vote against BB or for BB, whatever there is. The issue is BB or not to BB. And more than anything else, but obviously it's also the economy, it's uh, the uh, quest of young people to have really a future in this country so that they won't go to the United States or to Berlin, which is amazing. They won't go to Berlin to find uh, proper housing. And at the end of the day, we want peace. And not that it's a miracle and it's going to happen, but we need to give it a chance. You need to remember that a lot of things started here. At Rothschild, where my office uh, is situated, where I, actually I was born, not only the State of Israel was founded in 1948, but also uh, four years ago, the campaign in, 19, in 2011, the campaign of the young people, the revolt uh, against the system started in Rothschild. So I believe that to some extent, we also echo uh, something that goes all around the country, but remains to be seen. Some people say that this is the solution. It did happen in 1984 when you had Shamir, who was extreme right, and Shimon Peres, and it was an excellent government. Can Bibi work today with Bougie? I don't know. I think Shamir, even though he was extreme right, he was a modest person, and it wasn't a matter of ego. I'm not sure it's going to happen with uh, Bibi and Bougie, 
And frankly speaking, I'd like to see him going to Caesarea, to Caesarea. He's got a beautiful home. He can see the beach from there, and I wish him good luck and a lot of time over there in Caesarea. And he, collect, he can collect some empty bottles on the beach. Exactly. Uh, even, even if the uh, Labour Party wins, and even, the, even if they manage to form a coalition, this coalition will be very fragile. And BB, as a, as a hunter, will sit aside, will remain in politics, and wait for Bougie to fall and try to establish a different coalition based on the uh, extra, extremely extremist, the right extremist, and the uh, uh, Haredim, the uh, very uh, orthodox, ultra-orthodox. The ultra-orthodox parties, and to form a counter-coalition and rule again. So uh, this is a fear that uh, keeps me awake at night. The Leon Sharney Report congratulates the team of BDC, The Price of Peace, and Leon Sharney on the New York Emmy Awards win. The documentary reveals the true story of the negotiations leading up to the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time, the Camp David Accords between Israel and Egypt. Watch it on Hulu.com or buy the special feature edition DVD at select stores. Now get the book the hit movie was based on, Leon Charney's Backdoor Channels. Learn about the Backdoor Channel negotiations that led to the historic 1978 Israeli-Egyptian Peace Treaty. Become a witness to history and order Backdoor Channels online at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Also available at all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at iTunes or Audible.com. Relive history. Order Backdoor Channels. Get best-selling author Leon Charney's latest book, The Battle of the Two Talmuds. Join Charney as he explores years of Jewish history to find out why and how Talmudic scholars and rabbis abandoned the Holy Land for the lands of the Diaspora. Learn about the power struggles behind the creation of the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds. It's a book critics call engaging and enlightening, a book which will be of interest to people of every faith. Now available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, or download the audiobook of The Battle of the Two Talmuds at iTunes or Audible.com. Leon Charney sets out to discover the true meaning of the Kaddish, the Jewish custom of reciting a prayer to commemorate the death of a close relative. Join Charney as he finds out the history of the Kaddish and how it has evolved. Reviewed as a refreshing walk through Jewish history and a book that deserves to be read by both Jews and non-Jews, The Mystery of the Kaddish is now available online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at audible.com or on iTunes. Discover The Mystery of the Kaddish. Available now over iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Leon Charney's cantorial CD in Disco Long. Listen as Charney movingly sings El Mole Rachamim and Charney's amazing rendition of a disco remix of Adon Olam, all sung in the incredible and individual Charney style. Also listen to the CDs on Rhapsody. Download Leon Charney's cantorial songs in Disco Lam, the disco remix of Adon Olam on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Or listen in on Rhapsody, all available now. I would like to introduce my best friend Svi Rom. And the reason I chose him as my next guest for this interview is that uh, Svi spent many, many years in Washington. He is familiar no in Washington, D.C., correct. So not only is he very familiar with the Israeli politics, but he is an expert on American politics. And if needed, he can make the comparison between the American system and the Israeli non-existing system. Because there is a certain segment of the population in Israel that look at him and see. Fortunately or unfortunately, most of them are Sephardic Jews who remember the days where begging came up and how he treated them with more dignity and provided that. And that's the Likud and that's their home. And when he stood up, Netanyahu, in a very basic way, but against all rules of international relationship, and appeared in Washington, for them it was their leader who was taking a, a, a stand and showing the world that we are protecting. Because by the way, that segment of population believed that Iran is evil, 
many of them understand Farsi and they hear what the Ayatollahs are saying. They were encouraged by that act and I believe that some will be persuaded. I don't know if it is two or three electors, but um, I know from personal relationship with some of my neighbors that it did an impression on them that he is truly appearing as a leader. Regardless of how he treats them and how good or bad the local economy is, they were proud to see him over there as a superpower taking the stand. Truly the appearance and everything else, it's hard for anybody. It's not for nothing that Walter Cronkite was the evening news. You have to have that kind of voice, good evening. And it carries a whole lot, but it's not the voice. Without a real leader appearing, when Sharon took over, he was a leader and he had a weight. We don't see it. Yair Lapid is young and unexperienced. Kahlon doesn't want it. They look around and see who else could lead the country, and we are truly surrounded. And when they hurt him, I think that in some way they took some offense for him, and it might cost them some. The left. I would say that we were damaged, seriously damaged, because it was a bold move that should never happen. He have went into crossing before election in there against the president will against the house and everything else now you offend the americans president and representative you don't do that people are now having enough of the 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 tail that is wagging the dog and with APAC is so powerful and everything else we should have backed down and played low-key and we had so many governments who did that very nicely. Shimon Peres was fantastic doing for us. Rabi and all the others who were polite. Americans are polite. This was coming in bold, backed by you know who, who was sitting up there and uh, you know uh, the loudest applause came from those who are also uh, are influenced by the same uh, capital money. Tipi has experience, expertise, she was in Likud, she's a hardliner, but she and Buji saw that they have the, the, uh, the goodness of the people in their mind, and I believe that it was a good, very good, and it was gracious from her to say, I'm willing to do whatever. I, I really agree with most of the things my friend here, most of the things my friends here, here said, and uh, the, you know, this is this reflects what I previously said about the Tel Aviv bubble. It's not by uh, accident that we both think in a very similar way. Anybody who's an international, anybody who lives in and leaves Israel once in a while to take a look at how the world is, and we are not the center of the universe in a way, but we are in many other ways. And it's sensitive to do anything here with religions and everything else. The standard of life uh, held in Tel Aviv is uh, in a way different than the standard of life in most of the provinces, the uh, provincial cities and in the countryside of Israel. Uh, I would say one correction. It's Gush Dan. It's the center. Yes, it is it's from the Herzliya to whatever Correct. You when I say Tel Aviv, I referred to the center of the city. And I country. agree with that. That's what I was talking to his son and others. When you live in an apartment and you live in this life, it's quite a difference than the rest of the country. And we do visit the rest of the country just to make sure that we're not detached and we know what's going on there. So. And uh, I take his lead, so we shouldn't be that far apart on our thoughts. If you ask me about the Likud members, how would they look at Buji? I'll tell you something. They'll watch action. And he's all set and ready. And with this non function government that he's built, I'm from the energy business. Nothing moved in a year and a half of the past government. Not Lille, not maybe. Nothing have moved. Sylvan Shalom was not active at all in the energy business. I'm sorry to say that. So they have an open field to take, and uh, that's my take on it. That it would be I fully agree. Fully agree. The Leon Sharney Report congratulates the team of BDC, The Price of Peace, and Leon Sharney on the New York Emmy Awards win. The documentary reveals the true story of the negotiations leading up to the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time, the Camp David Accords between Israel and Egypt. Watch it on Hulu.com or buy the special feature edition DVD at select stores.
Now get the book the hit movie was based on, Leon Charney's Backdoor Channels. Learn about the backdoor channel negotiations that led to the historic 1978 Israeli-Egyptian peace treaty. Become a witness to history and order backdoor channels online at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Also available at all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at iTunes or Audible.com. Relive history. Order backdoor channels. Get best-selling author Leon Charney's latest book, The Battle of the Two Talmuds. Join Charney as he explores years of Jewish history to find out why and how Talmudic scholars and rabbis abandoned the Holy Land for the lands of the Diaspora. Learn about the power struggles behind the creation of the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds. It's a book critics call engaging and enlightening, a book which will be of interest to people of every faith. Now available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, or download the audiobook of The Battle of the Two Talmuds at iTunes or Audible.com. Leon Charney sets out to discover the true meaning of the Kaddish, the Jewish custom of reciting a prayer to commemorate the death of a close relative. Join Charney as he finds out the history of the Kaddish and how it has evolved. Reviewed as a refreshing walk through Jewish history and a book that deserves to be read by both Jews and non-Jews, The Mystery of the Kaddish is now available online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at audible.com or on iTunes. Discover The Mystery of the Kaddish. Available now over iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Leon Charney's cantorial CD in Disco Lam. Listen as Charney movingly sings El Mole Rachamim and Charney's amazing rendition of a disco remix of Adon Olam, all sung in the incredible and individual Charney style. Also listen to the CDs on Rhapsody. Download Leon Charney's cantorial songs in Disco Lam, the disco remix of Adon Olam on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Or listen in on Rhapsody, all available now. I'm Barbara Opal Rome, Bureau Chief in Israel for Defense News. We're based in Washington, D.C. I've been in Israel for 16 years, and prior to moving to Israel to, to establish our bureau, I've been with the newspaper for 28 years, writing on uh, the U.S. Israel strategic cooperative relationship. Uh, I've been involved with uh, U.S. Israel strategic uh, relations for 26 years. It's something that has become institutionalized. It's something that cannot be torn asunder by one single individual, but I have to tell you that the past uh, six years, the um, chemistry or lack thereof between the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, and the U.S. President, Barack Obama, has caused serious tension, serious strains on the relationship. Not only was the speech a very divisive uh, element in U.S. supporters of Israel, but it also made American Jews as a community feel a little bit almost ashamed, as Nancy Pelosi uh, so well stated. It's something that could ha it needed to be said. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu reflects Israelis' legitimate security concerns about a precipitous deal with Iran. His concerns are legitimate, but to air them in such a way at a joint session of Congress uh, so close uh, to the elections was just bald, uh, blatant, naked political, um, political posturing that was a poke in the eye to the U.S. president, and many, many people will not, will, will, uh, not want to forget that. Yitzhak Herzog will indeed repair uh, relations that have been seriously strained over the past six years, and particularly strained over the past two years, the second term of Barack Obama. He will, um, he will sh shoulder and boost Israel's legitimacy in the international community. He will not, I would imagine, that he is not going to be a rollover. There are serious legitimate security concerns that he and his, the government that he may put together uh, will have to address. But international legitimacy, without it, Israel, uh, its national security is basically bankrupt. Benjamin Netanyahu has been a bag of surprises since he entered politics so, so many years ago. Uh, we cannot rule this out. He is a, a very, very polished politician and he is clinging for his political life. Survival is the utmost for him, so I would not rule out uh, surprises. Ultimately, we'll have to see what the Israeli voters have to say and whether an insular, 
inward looking Israel uh, is what the, the Israeli voters want, or if they really do look out to the international community and hope to remain an integral part, a respected part of the international community. That's what this election is all about, in my, in my opinion. Bibi is passionate about the threat of Iranian nuclear weapons. I uh, traveled with him, I was part of his um, entourage when he went to Moscow uh, two years ago to try to implore Vladimir Putin to um, support Israel's position. He was, uh, Putin really was um, laughing at Netanyahu, um, made a, a disgrace of Netanyahu. Uh, because uh, three days later the P5 plus one signed this um, interim deal in Geneva. Uh, I do believe that Benjamin Netanyahu is passionate and he truly is sincere. He believes honestly that he is the, uh, the um, guardian of the Jewish people. He is the link in the chain that will preserve the Jewish people and the nation of Israel forevermore. And for that you really have to uh, admire him. However, his um, his tactics, his methodology, the way he is trying to implement his passion is, in my opinion, injurious to Israel. It's damaging to Israel's national security. The Leon Sharney Report congratulates the team of BDC, The Price of Peace, and Leon Sharney on the New York Emmy Awards win. The documentary reveals the true story of the negotiations leading up to the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time, the Camp David Accords between Israel and Egypt. Watch it on Hulu.com or buy the special feature edition DVD at select stores. Now get the book the hit movie was based on, Leon Charney's Backdoor Channels. Learn about the Backdoor Channel negotiations that led to the historic 1978 Israeli-Egyptian Peace Treaty. Become a witness to history and order Backdoor Channels online at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Also available at all of the retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at iTunes or Audible.com. Relive history. Order Backdoor Channels. Get best-selling author Leon Charney's latest book, The Battle of the Two Talmuds. Join Charney as he explores years of Jewish history to find out why and how Talmudic scholars and rabbis abandoned the Holy Land for the lands of the Diaspora. Learn about the power struggles behind the creation of the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds. It's a book critics call engaging and enlightening, a book which will be of interest to people of every faith. Now available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, or download the audiobook of The Battle of the Two Talmuds at iTunes or Audible.com. Leon Charney sets out to discover the true meaning of the Kaddish, the Jewish custom of reciting a prayer to commemorate the death of a close relative. Join Charney as he finds out the history of the Kaddish and how it has evolved. Reviewed as a refreshing walk through Jewish history and a book that deserves to be read by both Jews and non-Jews, The Mystery of the Kaddish is now available online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at audible.com or on iTunes. Discover The Mystery of the Kaddish. You know, we can look at it uh, in different levels. Uh, we can look at the technicalities, uh, which means that uh, Netanyahu proved to be a real fighter and a, um, a superior campaigner. Um, if we take seriously the, the polls of, of last week, and it's very difficult to take polls seriously after last night, uh, nonetheless, um, there was a gap in favor of uh, the Zionist Union, labor sorts. Um, and in a blitz of three days and the very sharp message, a very problematic message, some of it borders on racism, uh, he managed to, to get uh, traditionally good voters back home. So that's the technicality of it. But I think it is a far deeper story. And I think the story is that the uh, left in Israel uh, has not been able to communicate with the rest of the country. Whenever there is hope for 
the peace camp sort of uh, to win elections, it is by a technical trick of sorts. Uh, last time, or this time, it was the hope that somebody like Kahlon, who comes from the right, but has social, social economic inclinations that align with the left, will get votes from the right, and if he joins the Zionist Union, then you have a majority, which means almost a resignation to the fact that the left will not, on its own, will not be able to create a majority. Now, instead of stopping and saying why, where do we go wrong that our message does not bring votes from the other side of the fence? We're looking for the technical solution. Be it Kahlon, be it Yesh uh, Atid uh, with Yair Lapid, that they will bring some votes that are floating away from uh, Netanyahu. So, yes, there was a wave of Netanyahu fatigue among his traditional voters. And therefore, this technical solution could have worked were it not for his very uh, effective campaign in the last few days. I don't think that Labour or, or Bougie or the, the, the Zionist uh, Union's uh, campaign was, a, was sharp anti-Netanyahu. Uh, uh, it was more the media, uh, it was more others. I think that, that, that the, left in, the center left in Israel should go for a much deeper, deeper soul searching. Try to find out where is it that they found themselves leaders without troops behind? What is it that makes it impossible? for such a large segment of the population to even consider voting for them. And I think that you have here several factors. One, labor that used to be associated with security no longer is. It's not that you have a division of generals on the Likud side. It's not the identity of the individual, perhaps, it is the message, and the message that uh, peace comes first and security second, even though nobody says that, but it's implied, doesn't work. People want to hear security first and peace as a derivative of security. So that's one. The second, I think that the conventional wisdom or the, 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 the collective wisdom of the people should be taken seriously. I mean, you have a majority in the country for more than a decade that accept a two-state solution. Some want it, some are willing to accept it because we have to. We can't continue being Jewish state with such a huge Arab uh, population. Uh, but if, if this is, runs around the 65% of the population. But a much larger majority, something like 80%, don't believe that this is possible because there is no partner. Now, the left or the peace camp or labor or the Zionist Union cannot ignore that sentiment. If people don't believe that there is a partner, think seriously, what does it mean for your message? If you say peace now, or peace tomorrow morning, and people look at you and say, what are you talking about? With whom? Abu Mazen is weak. H Hamas is in Gaza. The Palestinians are divided. The neighborhood is in flames. Okay, is this really the moment to make historical decisions? Or is this the moment to hold and see what's going on? So there were two approaches to this. One approach was Bibi. And Bibi said, when this thing is up in flames, we go into the bunker, we pull out the periscope, and we wait for the dust to settle. The other approach said, our enemies are all weakened by this turmoil. This is the opportunity to strike a deal. The people, I belong to the latter, to the second school, but the people think that the Netanyahu careful, cautious, time grinding 
time uh, is correct. So I, I, I think that just uh, the wrong message in a campaign or the hope that Kahlon will bring it about and will be the, 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 the tiebreaker, kingmaker, that's technicality. I think we should take a step back and do serious soul searching. And from back to forward, there's a question now, what kind of a coalition we're going to have? I think that labor is yet to internalize the fact that serving in the opposition is legitimate and even essential if you want to make a comeback. If you join a government that pursues a policy that you disagree with, you are contaminated by that policy. And the morning after, when you stand to challenge it, you have no credibility. You were there. How come you are saying that this is the wrong policy and you fight it when you were there for so long? Labor has to go to opposition, regroup, think its message through, challenge the coalition. Democracy is based, especially parliamentary democracy, is based on the fact that there is a coalition and there is an opposition. We have not had an opposition in a long time. That's not healthy for our democracy. Mm -hmm.